Today, I see a steam locomotive and I want to paint it black. Nowadays, if you want a locomotive in a specific livery, the chances are that model manufacturers will either have made it already in that livery or have it announced. However, there are some liveries that often go unrepresented or are like the proverbial rocking horse poop to get hold of. Or, like me, you like a bargain and no matter what colour the model is. So having the ability to repaint a model is a very important skill when it comes to either frugality or getting exactly what you want. So what do I want? I want a model of Shackenhurst Hall in Great Western wartime black. A livery yet to be produced on a hall by any double gauge manufacturer, despite its popularity among modelers. Wartime black in general is rarely produced, with the Backman's recent model of Great Western Pannier 3738 being one of the only examples of ready to run wartime black. Often, this livery is easy to produce, as you just need a BR unlined black model, a fiberglass pencil, and some GWR transfers, and you can easily recreate the livery. However, my route to a black hall isn't quite going to be so quick. It won't be too difficult, it's just a bit of a long process. So let's start by looking through what gear I'm going to be using. First of all, the donor model. This is a Hornby Railroad Hall which has at some point along the line been painted to an okay-ish standard in BR lined black. I picked this up as part of a job lot for an excellent price, hence the frugality. Also, as it's going from a BR livery into a GWR livery, we'll need to remove the smoke box number plate, which you can either grind off or cut off or something like that, or replace the whole front end, which is what I did for less than five pounds from Precision Phoenix, you can get a smoke box door and handles. We'll also need a small amount of brass sheet, some Dettol, white spirit, primer, the new paint, transfers, name and number plates, and crew and coal. So let's get started. This isn't just going to be a straight swap of colors. There's a little bit of modification to do to the logo itself. First of all, it started its life as Hogwarts Castle, which means we've got a smoke box number plate to deal with. You can do the free option, which is a bit of hacking about and filing the old one off, which I've done in the past and I've never, never done it particularly well. So I just opted to replace it. Secondly, a tiny little bit of scratch building. As this loco is from the wartime, the cab side windows were covered over to limit the light from the firebox escaping and making them easier to be spotted by the Luftwaffe. So a small piece of brass cut and filed to shape to cover the side window. I did try using a track pin and a hammer to replicate rivets, however that didn't come out too well so I binned those and just continued with that. Now we can start getting ready for the main event. I started taking the model apart and removing details. So I flicked off the name and number plates and put them to one side. I won't be reusing these ones on this particular model, but I may reuse them in the future. I now found and undid all the screws I could find and put them to one side and I took the model apart. The loco chassis I put to one side as that didn't require any painting. However, I did take the cylinder block off as that required a repaint. On the body, I popped the smoke box door off and I didn't attach the new one yet. I'll do that later. I also removed the glazing from the cab, the buffers from both buffer beams, and put all those with the screws. The boiler and cab also pull away from the running plate. This can take a little bit of careful persuasion. However, it will come away eventually, but be careful not to damage the plastic at all, like some utter fool managed to do right here. On the tender, I took the whole thing apart and removed all the electrics and pickups and put those in the box of safekeeping. I put the wheels with them too for the time being, however they too will be getting spray of colour when the time comes. So I now have a big pile of bits, the boiler, the cab, the running plate, the cylinders, the tender body and the tender chassis. All these will require a dunking in Dettol. This in my mind is a gentler process than others I've read about and will take around 24 hours give or take. I have however heard of some horror stories about people leaving models in Dettol and then coming back a day later to find a melted plastic lump that vaguely resembles something like the loco that they put in previously. 
so I always leave it to soak, but check it every couple of hours to make sure nothing is going too badly. Like, the plastic isn't getting too soft, nothing's moving, or anything, anything that shouldn't really be happening. Each time I do this, I do give it a quick scrub with an old toothbrush just to see how much paint has been removed and how much more is still to go. I find that aftermarket paint like uh, Humbrol and sort of enamels like that come off pretty easily. However, factory applied paint often takes a little bit more to actually get going. Once the paint has been fully removed, I took the model out of the depot, Dettol, and immediately give it a good scrub in some white spirit, making sure you get it all over. This is because simply washing it in warm water afterwards would leave the model quite sticky all over. Not entirely sure what that is, but whatever it is, the white spirit removes that. After the Duncan white spirit, then it's time for the warm soapy water and allow it plenty of time to dry. Now this is where I add the, the few new details. The smoke box door and the handles are glued into position and the window covers also get super glued in place. That was the plan, however, as you can probably tell, I did forget these and these went on at a slightly later time. As you could probably tell from those clips, I do like to get my money's worth. I often try and utilize the Dettol that I have for as many models as possible. So I try and cram the container with as much model as I can. And as you can see, there is also a Backman modified hull also taking a little bit of a soak here. Once the glue has dried, it's time for painting. Firstly, I spray all the parts with two coats of Halfords Primer. I use the technique of starting the spray when not over the model and then move the can across the model and releasing the spray once it's cleared the painting area. Then once that has fully dried, I go and get the tender wheels out of the safe box and we begin spraying it the final colour. Simply spraying everything all over with two coats of black, making sure I get good coverage from all angles and not spraying any area for too long as to avoid any runs in the paint or the paint becoming too thick so to lose any of the detail. Once that is all dry, I can start thinking about putting the model back together again. But first, as the tender wheels are pickups, I took a cotton bud and with some cellulose thinners on it and cleaned the inner edges and the contact area of the wheel of paint. I then put the entire model back together and once back together, I painted the buffer beams red, I picked out details in the cab and I also then put the transfers on the tender side and the buffer beams. The whole locomotive then got a spray of varnish, being careful not to get any varnish on the pickups. I then glued the new name and number plate in place along with the crew in the cab and the coal in the tender. And that is the project done. As I said, it wasn't a particularly difficult project just slightly time consuming with all the soaking and drying times. Thank you for watching. If you found that helpful, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons as it really gives me an indication if people actually care what I'm saying or care that I'm doing anything or care that I exist or care. Well, don't mind me having an existential crisis. Thank you for watching. Good night.